Hi everyone, this is Daryl Falk on Coming to Peace with Science. In this multi-part series, we're going to talk about the awe-inspiring origin of our second chromosome. We'll peer into its structure and we'll see what the structure tells us about the way in which God created humankind. Hang on for the ride. You don't need to be a scientist to appreciate the beauty of what we'll learn. First though, what is a chromosome? And then more specifically, what is chromosome 2? A chromosome consists of genes arranged along a string of coding units in DNA. It is one long DNA molecule stretched from one end to the other. Chromosome number 2 specifically has about 242 million bits or bases of code. Genes are segments of this code and there are about 2,000 genes on chromosome 2. Altogether, we've got 23 different chromosomes, and we've got a pair of each one, one member of which came from our mother and the other member of which came from our father, and that gives us 46 altogether. On those 23 different chromosomes, each represented twice, are about 20,000 genes. So, what do these 20,000 genes do? A gene provides information. Each gene, in its own unique way, provides a set of instructions that serve to build and maintain the various cells in our body. In addition to having genes strung along it, a chromosome also has three special sections, sequences of code that have a unique function. At each end of each chromosome, in order to protect it from degradation, there's a special code known as the telomere. The telomere works to block enzymes that would otherwise chew away at exposed ends. So these are two of the special regions of a chromosome, the telomeres, one at each end, and they function to protect it. There's another special region in a chromosome, it's called a centromere. It's important in ensuring the orderly separation of duplicated chromosomes. Chromosomes must duplicate in preparation for one cell becoming two cells. And the centromere is important in ensuring that one copy of the duplicated chromosomes ends up in one cell and the other duplicate ends up in the other cell. There's little strings that attach to each duplicate to pull them to opposite cells. The little strings attached to the centromere, which is a region of code at a specific spot on the chromosome. So to recap, First, a chromosome consists of genes arranged along it in a particular order. Second, there is a cap called the telomere at each end. And third, a chromosome has a centromere. This specific chromosome is chromosome number two, and it has a particularly interesting history. And I'm now going to tell you what is really intriguing about it. When you look under a microscope at a chromosome, you see a pattern of bands. The pattern is a property of the array of genes along it. So this is chromosome 2, the banding pattern of chromosome 2. Chimpanzees, gorillas, and orangutans have almost the exact same genes as we do, which means that the same chromosome banding pattern is present. But there's one important difference. The banding pattern, corresponding to our chromosome 2, is found not in one comparable chromosome, it's found in two smaller chromosomes, each about half the length of our chromosome number 2. They have a chromosome 2p, and they have a chromosome 2q. When you analyze the DNA code, or DNA sequence, you find that it is almost exactly the same in chimpanzee 2p as it is in one half of our chromosome 2. By the same token, when you analyze Chimpanzee chromosome 2q, it has almost exactly the same DNA sequence as what we find in the other half of our chromosome 2. So when you line them up, this is what you see. So each of that set of about 2,000 genes is on one contiguous chromosome for us humans, but on two smaller chromosomes in chimpanzees. This is also true of the other great apes. We're going to work our way towards the question of what this has to say about the way in which God has created humankind. But first, we need to explore a hypothesis. Since the two chromosomes of great apes line up so well with one chromosome of humans, evolutionary theory would predict that since we share common ancestors, according to evolutionary theory, with great apes, and we share them in the ancient past, our ancient ancestors also had two chromosomes. At some recent point in our lineage, but not in any of theirs, the two chromosomes became attached. Two separate chromosomes became one. 
We know that chromosomes fuse sometimes. Indeed, about one out of every thousand children are born with a newly fused chromosome. So evolutionary theory predicts that in an ancient ancestor, chromosome 2P became fused to chromosome 2Q to become what we now call chromosome 2. This, of course, doesn't prove common descent from an ancestor that we share with great apes. It could be that God, in his design of human beings, chose to put the information into one package for humans rather than two packages that were used for great apes. This is hypothesis number one the God as an engineer hypothesis. I'm going to suggest an alternative. Hypothesis number two, the God as parent hypothesis. According to this hypothesis, God in love establishes and maintains the conditions for human creation, but God does not dictate every step along the way. In hypothesis number two, God works through evolutionary processes like a parent. In hypothesis number one, God is like the pito, putting all the parts together kind of like a master puppet builder. Hypothesis number two predicts that when the two chromosomes became one, a chromosome with four telomeres would have been present. Furthermore, it predicts still today Chromosome number two would still have two extra sets of telomeres at the exact point where the banding patterns between chimpanzee chromosome 2Q and chimpanzee chromosome 2P merge. Furthermore, it predicts the two telomeres would be oriented in exactly opposite ways at the junction point because, after all, they come from two different ends of chromosomes. That's exactly what is found. Two telomeres in the middle of our chromosome, and they are in opposite orientation. Furthermore, Hypothesis number two predicts since the telomeres aren't needed anymore, they would have accumulated some changes. Mutations occur over time, and in this case the mutations would be tolerated since the code isn't needed when it's internal. Hypothesis number two also predicts that the newly fused chromosome would have two centromeres, each at the exact same location at which there is a centromere in the two chimpanzee chromosomes. That's exactly what is found. One of those centromeres is degraded, but one can look at the code at the precise location where there is a centromere in chimps and can see that the relics of an old centromere are present. With the other position, on the other hand, in humans, there is a fully functional normal centromere. Hypothesis number one doesn't predict this. Hypothesis number one is the God as Capito or God as the modern day engineer. And there would be no reason to put two oppositely oriented telomeres in the middle of a chromosome at the exact place where two real telomeres are found in great apes. Nor would there be a reason to put a centromere relic at the exact place where a real centromere exists in great apes. The data is consistent with God being like a parent in that hypothesis and is not consistent with the Gabito God or God as an engineer hypothesis. In our next discussion, we're going to talk about why the fusion event may have been tolerated when it first happened. And we're going to ask a question, ought we be surprised that the first individual with two centromeres survived and had offspring? Furthermore, we'll discuss why the early population of individuals with fused chromosomes not only survived, but may actually have benefited from the event. More on that in part two.